I'm Dr. Diana Kerwin. I'm an internist and geriatrician. I've been working in the field of Alzheimer's disease diagnosis and management for 20 years. This is, I think, one of the areas with the application of, you know, biomarker movement or biomarker efficacy versus clinically meaningful efficacy. I actually, my view, maybe I'm optimistic on this. I actually think this is going to be one of the ways that primary care physicians really end up taking the lead on this. I think primary care physicians have been accustomed to other chronic disease management and understanding what is the early biomarker that I need to be aware of and follow during my treatment implementation in order to uh, change or, or somehow address or delay the onset of some of the negative long-term you know, clinical effects that can be seen if the disease remains unchecked. So I think diabetes is probably the most common or the easiest uh, example to compare of following you know, microalbumin in the urine um, and being sure that you're addressing all of the lifestyle, diet, exercise, as well as medication management for that patient in order to avoid long-term negative outcomes for that patient. I do think primary care physicians, there's a good likelihood with us uh, now evolving into the biomarker identification, understanding how that biomarker profile is going to help them to address as well, you know, what's, what's the prevention uh, piece that I can, information I can give to patients, diet, exercise, lifestyle changes that they can make to help prevent you know, negative outcomes or decline in the future. And then once there are symptoms, just as diabetics do develop symptoms of disease as it becomes more chronic, uh, neuropathy and things like that, once those then symptomatic uh, presentations start to come about, how can I address cognitive impairment for this patient's treatment plan? How can I address how the cognitive impairment impacts function for this patient? How can I address the behaviors that are coming along with the cognitive impairment and being sure that all of that is managed or at least addressed in the care of that patient and understanding that even in, in the cases that if I am addressing the underlying biomarker issue, such as with disease modifying therapies, the long-term outcomes may not be completely eliminated as far as the disease may still progress. I may still have to address some of the clinical changes, but I likely am going to affect the trajectory of the disease and I can still address those clinical um, out or those clinical um, outward measures or clinical presentations as they develop, knowing that as I address the biomarker, I'm really ad addressing the underlying issues. I'm going to, I'm potentially delaying the onset of some of the negative clinical outcomes such as cognitive impairment, functional impairment behaviors, um, but I still know that I'll have to address those likely throughout the course of the disease. And I do think that there's a big advantage for us in that primary care I think has, and especially if they've been dealing with an elderly population, the chronic management of disease following biomarkers and knowing that they can correlate with what is the long-term uh, trajectory for that patient, I think is, is a very commonly understood medical paradigm in primary care that I think will be applied. I think it's just a matter of us being sure that we get the information out there. I think being sure that we um, give the primary care physicians good information about prevention and treatment, but also disparities or differences in how the biomarkers present in different populations, being sure that the physicians feel comfortable applying those biomarkers in a diverse patient population um, outside of, it may be sure it applies to Caucasian or how does it apply in black uh, or African-American or Hispanic Latinx patients so that physicians feel comfortable that that biomarker and their understanding of the um, what that means uh, and how to use that in the care of that patient applies. And so that's where I do think in our research, we still have to continue with improving our diversity um, and so that we can improve our, our application and understanding of what we have learned and be sure it applies to all of the patients that physicians are gonna be seeing to increase their um, confidence in the data. Mm -hmm.